Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Praise the Lord. As I sat through the um, opening charge last night, I just saw that there is a battle between light and darkness. Uh, and I know that I know the end of that battle. I know the result of that battle. That God is going to win. I also noticed that God could have done everything alone. But by mercy, he decided to include us. That brought a responsibility to us that while God on his part is ready, I we do, I we do, I we do, we on our part as well should be ready to work with him. Some time ago, we came here to cut grass. Then we didn't have a mower. And somebody was cutting grass and we were saying that, Kai, this your cutlass is very sharp. Oh. This your cutlass is very sharp. Oh. Then the man said, no. It is the hand behind the cutlass. It is the hand beyond, I mean behind the cutlass. It, the strength is being supplied from somewhere. That is why we see the cutlass so working. It is in that light I'd like to share with us from uh, the word of God. I want to begin from Ecclesiastes chapter 10. If the iron be blunt and he do not wait the age, then must he put to more strength but wisdom is profitable to direct. Let me take it from two other versions. The Living Bible says, A dull axe, I'm reading from the Living Bible now, requires great strength. Be wise and sharpen the blade. Let me take it again from message remember the dollar the axe the harder the work use your head the more brains the less muscle now from this scripture since God has decided to include us in what he is doing and he himself is calling us the battle axe. It means something must happen to this axe. And from the places we have read, we saw that an axe or a knife or a cutlass can go blunt after several uses. If you are cutting meat, you start with a sharp knife. But after some few cuttings, you discover that 
the knife is no longer sharp. Uh, maybe some fat from the meat or some reasons they make the, the knife blunt. So when you go to an abattoir, you see them with a knife, but you also see them with a resharpening material. After a few cuttings, you see them sharpening and sharpening and sharpening to go back and cut again. If they don't sharpen it repeatedly, at a point, the knife cannot cut again. And the Bible said, when the iron becomes blunt, then you need greater strength to be able to even do something small. So it is our responsibility now to make sure that we as battle axes, we as God's knife, we as God's sword, we as God's cutlasses, we must remain sharp and continue to resharpen. Even this meeting is the divine arrangement to sharpen us so that when we go back, we can do more battle for the Lord. But, like I have mentioned, a knife, a cutlass, can become blunt by reason of use or misuse. So I'm asking, what are the things that can make an iron blunt? When you now use your cutlass to cut some other things, or maybe cut stone, or cut other pieces of iron, that's a misuse, and the iron can easily get blunt. When you use it for wrong things, it can get blunt. And when you don't want to use it for what it is meant for, then you discover it's not performing. And there's a large summary in verse 1. Let's return to verse 1. From the Message Bible says, Dead flies in perfume make it stink, and a little foolishness decomposes much wisdom. Verse 1 is an information, a guide, an instruction. If we keep it, the iron, the axe, the knife, the cutlass, they will continue to remain sharp. Because we will not allow what the Bible calls dead flies. You know, generally, perfume is a very sweet smelling something. But that something can happen to a perfume that will spoil it. And the Bible calls it dead flies. Let me see what it is called in another version. Uh, the Living Bible. It is still the dead flies. They say dead fires will cause even a bottle of perfume to stink. Yes, a small mistake can outweigh much wisdom and honor. Now let me look at King James as well. He said dead flies cause the ointment of apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. So does a little folly him that is reputable for wisdom and honor. In verse 1, we are seeing God's intention for you as uh, health workers. God wants a good smell to be going out from doctors to patients, a good smell to be going out from nurses to patients, a good smell to be going out from lab technicians to patients even a good smell from the ward attendant and the hospital security officers a good smell from the midwife that is God's intention that when a patient meets a Christian doctor nurse even the security man he will touch something good. He will touch something 
wonderful. A good smell of Christ will be reaching out to him. But now the Bible said, if that health worker now indulges in some small foolishness, they call it a little foolishness, and that that little foolishness can destroy so much, and it will render, it will change your testimony. When we have a cashier in the hospital, what could be the little I mean, foolishness that he could exhibit to finish him? His name may be James, or his name may be David, and her name may be Esther in the cashier in the hospital. Using double receipts. Apart from the hospital official receipt, she or he could print her own receipts and start issuing to patients from time to time. Dead flies have already entered such a person and it will change the smell. When later somebody discovered that your name is Esther, I said, mm -mm, you can't be Esther because you're already smelling bad. Why are you using private receipt to collect money from patients? If you're a medical doctor and all your interest is to do abortion because you know that brings quick money, dead flies have already entered into you and only bad smells will be going out bad smell will be going out sometimes these dead flies may not be too obvious but they are if a medical officer decide to have a private clinic and he's a government doctor and when patient comes they are directing them to their private clinic and charging them and collecting money while the government hospital is becoming bankrupt. Dead flies. You know, generally, a fly is a very small insect. But look at the damage that they can do. They said it will destroy so much. It will change everything and reduce the man that was meant for reputation and wisdom and honor we are in this meeting first of all to receive help from God so that we can go and be useful and bring light to our places of labor sometimes you hear University lecturers, lecturers in schools of nursing and midwifery, lecturers in the technical colleges of health and so on, you hear them talking to a lady and said, if I don't sleep with you, you will not pass my course. Dead flies. Dead flies. And what is the name of this? Lecturer and his title, he may be Brother David. Oh, Brother David, a lecturer that is demanding that he must defy somebody before the person can pass. Sometimes they even vow and say, Over my dead body, you are not going to graduate. Dead flies when they enter. When they enter into a health worker, they will produce a very foul smell. Sometimes what you meet will make you wonder whether the hospital's name should be the name. For example, Christian Hospital, so so and so. And then you meet that kind of uh, health personnel who is misbehaving and you wonder why you should call it uh, a Christian hospital or a Christian clinic sometimes names are more beautiful than the institution itself because the institution can be the headquarters of foolishness 
And now the Bible said, dead flies, they cause the ointment of apothecary um, to produce a foul smell. Dead flies cause even a bottle of perfume to stink. Yes, a small mistake. Sometimes instead of calling sin, sin, you call it mistake. Sometimes two people are planning to marry. And the church where they come from, they are demanding a hospital report as touching their health status. One of the partners may be sick, but he wants to marry and he wants to hide something. He just needs to go to even a Christian hospital and meet a Christian lab technician and offer him some bribe for him to give him the correct lab result that is not the original thing in the body. What about using expired chemicals, reagents, to conduct tests? These are the things that will make the axe blunt and God will be struggling to use you. Many times as we are praying, God use me, God use me, God use me. If you listen carefully, God will be announcing more sanctification, more sanctification, more sanctification. Because the battle is between light and darkness. Anytime we also become darkness, we can only partner with darkness. We will partner with the enemy. And so it is required that we must remain sharp. And remaining sharp means that we must not allow the things we call small mistake and so on and so forth. Now let us look at uh, um, Luke chapter 3. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Eturia, and of the region of um, um, Traconitis and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priests, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came, he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching and baptizing of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth or and all flesh shall see the salvation of the lord then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him O generation of vipers who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves We have Abraham to our father For I say unto you That God is able of these stones To raise up children unto Abraham And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruits Is hewn down and cast into the fire and the people asked him, saying, What shall we do? And he answered and said unto them, He that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none. And he that has meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and he said unto him, Master, what shall we do? 
And he said unto them, Exact no more than what is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. And as the people were, ex were in expectation, and all men mused in their heart of John whether he were the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now we are looking at battle axes. From verse 1, I want you to know that there is a cloud of witnesses watching all of us in the health hector. When patients come to the hospital, they are watching each and every one of you. They are hearing and listening to the manner of communication, how you are speaking to patients. How the situation of the patient doesn't move you. Somebody comes bleeding and you are sluggish about it. Sometimes you are giving an IV infusion. And the whole thing has gone in. And the nurse or the midwife or the person on duty who should either remove it or clip it or do something is just sitting and watching and blood is returning into the, the, the bag. In the days of John, verse 1 gave us a list of great witnesses that were watching him. They talk about um, Tiberius Caesar. They talk about uh, Herod. They talk about Philip. And so many of them, they talk about Lysania. These were witnesses. In the hospital, in your clinic, in the school of health, and school of midwifery, school of nursing, you meet a host of witnesses. They are listening to your discussions. They are watching you. They are even taking history of you from others. As we go back, we need to be mindful of the cloud of witnesses. Patients in the theater, patients in the OPD, patients everywhere. If we become conscious of this cloud of witnesses, it may help us because we will not permit any little foolishness to spoil our testimonies. But even as we mention these people in verse 1, the greatest witness is in heaven and is watching you that one even examines the thought of your heart. Many times, when medical officers see beautiful female patients, they demand investigations that are not even necessary. Just to undress her and to humiliate her. What is the need of V? VE, when somebody is complaining of headache, what's the connection? That's a little foolishness. John was mindful. John was mindful that I'm working, I am serving God in the midst of several witnesses, and I must be careful not to allow any foolishness to finish me. Now, John was careful, and we must also be careful, because he was aware of these witnesses. Verse 2 said, John used to speak.
spend his time in the wilderness. And that is where the word of God kept coming to him. How committed are you to your personal Christian quiet time? He was in the wilderness. He was doing his quiet time. He was having his personal retreat. He was working with God privately, personally. John was not just a public Christian. And when he returns, it will be something else. No, 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 no. The word of God came to him in the wilderness. If I want to find out this morning, I may be surprised that somebody woke up without having quiet time this morning. He never went to the wilderness and is already making a public appearance. If you are going to be correct, you must be where the word of God must keep coming to you because the word of God is water. It washes, it sanctifies. It will make you sharp and God will enjoy working with you. John the Baptist, he resisted the temptation of open Christianity. Just going to sit with kings and collecting things. He spent time. He was in the wilderness. Sometimes even a Christian has no Bible. Oh. Eh? A Christian has no Bible. So where is your own cleansing agent? Where is your own sharpening agent? Because you see, if we are not sharp as a Ecclesiastes 10, 10 says, we will give God tough time. God will have to use strength and use strength. Example was Jacob. Jacob was a blunt knife from the beginning. was a blunt axe. And you see how God struggled and struggled and struggled with, with uh, a, a Jacob in uh, Genesis 32. You say, he wrestled with him till the breaking of the day. Thank God as the day was breaking, Jacob was conquered. I pray God will conquer you before the breaking of this meeting. Because if this God doesn't conquer you, neither will you conquer any patient. From the day Jacob was conquered, he got a new name. So you will no longer be called Jacob. But you will be called Israel. You will no longer be a supplanter. You will not be a cheat. But you will be a blessing. Our names may need to be changed. By our encounter with the Lord. Now. When he came back out of the wilderness. Then verse 3. He started preaching. It will be wonderful if a health worker is meeting patients after he has met God. That he would have met God first before he gets to the lab, he gets to the theater, he gets to the world, he gets to anywhere. From the wilderness, after receiving his personal cleansing, John the Baptist now came out in verse 3 and began to preach. The baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Somebody quoted what he was preaching. Quoted a prophecy concerning him. Isaiah reported that prophecy said in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. 
We were not there where John was preaching, but Isaiah the prophet quoted this message. And people are quoting you everywhere. Sometimes, those who know you so much, when you are claiming to be a child of God, they wonder what kind of God you are serving. And because John is coming out of the wilderness, out of the presence of the Lord, his message was very strong. He was fearless. Fear is one of the agents we make an ass blunt. Oh. How does fear express itself? When you keep quiet, when you are supposed to talk for Jesus, fear has made you blunt. You see an evil practice going on. Instead of you to speak out, fear will close your mouth. I love the theater nurse that I met over the years. Anytime this man was on duty, because in the hospital administration, the theater nurse is in charge of the equipment, all the forceps and so on. So if any evil doctor wanted to come and do abortion during this brother's um, shift the brother will hide the the forceps he will not give it he won't say well I'm not the one doing it so I will just give and then tell God that me I'm not the one no no no, no. he will not give it so at a point the doctors knew that if they want to do any shoddy deal they won't come when this brother is on duty. He was an axe for God. He won't tolerate evil practice on his duty. What are you doing when you go on duty? When it is your turn to work in the lab. When it is your turn to work in the theater. When it is your turn to wheel the patient somewhere. Yesterday we were told that one careless lord made uh, Mephibosheth to drop on the ground and he became useless. Sometimes we are careless with the patients and they enter into troubles that wouldn't have been theirs. What we keep us correct, correct and sharp is that we spend time in the wilderness. When you wake up, encounter God and let God also encounter you. And he prepares you for that day. He will now teach you the right language to communicate with patients. He will give you wisdom that is beyond your classroom learnings. And by the time you are encountering patients, what was the report of John will become your report. John became bold as he came out from the wilderness, from the presence of the Lord. And he was speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. Today we have opportunity to attend that service where John was preaching. As we go through the word of God. He said, as somebody quoted his preaching. Make your path straight. Make your path straight. Close every valley in your life. Level every hill that you know in your life. Fill up every valley. Let the crooked path be made straight. That was the sermon of John. We are here by reason of this understanding 
we are also sitting where John was preaching. Dear health worker, do you know of any crooked way in your life? Because that crooked way will make the axe blunt and God will suffer in your hand trying to use you. Many times you will just disgrace God. Make every crooked part straight. The way you appear before the patients, the way you speak to them, Sometimes words can cause more pain than the sickness itself. And John was saying, if you people are going to be sharp instruments, sharp axes, sharp swords in the hand of God, then make your path straight. Fill up every hill. Level every mountain. Repair every crooked way. Let it be made straight. And the rough ways shall be made smooth. Maybe God could have undertaken to do everything alone. But mercy has brought us to be partners with him. And we are then looking at, so what shall be our path? We must not frustrate the grace of God by living a contrary life that will make it difficult for God to use. You remember that day when fear came on the life of Peter and he began to deny the Lord and say, well, I don't know that man, I don't know that man, I don't know that man. What about those who had known him to be with the Lord before and they now met him denying the Lord? What message was Peter preaching? Every crooked path in us, every falsehood, sometimes a carelessness. How does it take temperature? He won't even have a thermometer. He'll be using the back of his hand. Just touch it like this. 35 degrees centigrade. 37 degrees centigrade. Because he wants to finish it quickly. Well, the ignorant patient may not know what you are doing, but I said John was walking in the midst of witnesses. And apart from the physical witnesses sitting, there was one divine witness. That one upset, but you are not taking temperature. That God has invited us to partner with him is a very big matter. Our lives must not be contrary to God's life. How can two work together if we and God are not together? If our lives do not agree with him, then this partnership will not work. And if Satan succeeds in dividing us, you can see that the battle will be very difficult. Now when John was now preaching, having come out from the wilderness with the heat of the word of God is in life. One of the things he told the people that if you don't change, even you yourselves, an axe is laid. You see, we are supposed to be the axe, but if you don't do well, another axe is laid to cut you down. And as he was speaking, the grace of God, the power of God began to touch people. And they were coming to him, coming to him, coming to him, coming to him. They were coming in their groups and professions. They said, first of all, tax collectors came. He answered them, don't collect more than government requires. Soldiers came. They said, don't use violence on people. And so on and so forth. Do you know that if a health worker is doing well, he attracts patients. 
Some people will die, deliberately wait and say, when that doctor comes on duty, when that nurse comes on duty, then I will go. When the lab, that particular lab technician in the, is in the, in the lab, then I will go. John came out well. And he became a center of attraction. People just believe that if I meet this lab technician, I will get correct lab result. If I meet this pharmacist, I will get correct drug. One day, somebody was taking some drugs and he was not improving. I think it was erythromycin capsules. And we decided, okay, let's open the case and see what is inside. Because lab results so that is sensitive to this. If that lab result was correct and the, the drug was correct, then we should have good results. When we open, you know, a capsule is made up of two pieces. You pour it and then you cover it. When we opened it, what we saw inside was looking like gari mixed with some sand. And this person continued to spend money taking it, taking it, taking it, taking it. There was no improvement. And these things we carry NAVDAC approved numbers. I wish we also have some health workers that will be working in NAVDAC who will not just approve a product because they so money. John was the man that the people wanted to listen to. And as they came, he didn't change his message. He went on and on and on and on. Now verse 15 says, And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John lived his own life in such a way that whoever had read Bible before and then met John, he was wondering, is it not the Christ? Because even as was looking at the fact of uh, you being the battle as God is not coming from the ceiling to fall inside a, 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 a laboratory. It's not jumping from the ceiling to fall inside the world. It's not jumping from the ceiling to fall inside the theater. He is within. And as people witness your behavior, they are wondering, is it not Jesus? They saw John as if it is not the normal human being they knew. Because everything about him was just light and light and light and light and light. And people were saying, ah, ah, is this man not the Christ that we are expecting? In the same manner, you could also do something that looks like Satan has also come. You could also add some little foolishness or what the living Bible calls a mistake that will just destroy your testimony and all the patients will agree that this one is not a Christian. John was careful. When people see you on duty, what do they equate you with? They say, is it not the Christ? The way he is talking to people, the way he is hearing, the way he is interacting, is he not the Christ? When people meet you in the theater, on the operating table, will you give them reason to say, ah, Jesus has entered theater today. 
When they meet a nurse on duty, they say, ah, Jesus has come into the world today. He's doing this and this and this. People were one. Is this not the Christ? When people want to assess you, what are they likely to say about you? Because God has called us to partner with him, we must be sharp. If we appear blunt, if the knife becomes blunt, if the axe is blunt, we will just be suffering God. We will put God into a terrible struggle to try to achieve results. I told you how he struggled and struggled and struggled with Jacob. But thank God, by the breaking of the day, Jacob was won, Jacob was changed, Jacob had a new name. And I'm praying that we will not allow anything that will make us blunt as health workers. I want us to pray together. The message of John was every crooked path, every crooked path, every wrong thing that you know you are inside, it can make you blunt and God will, you will no longer be the right axe. Every valley in your life, we thank God for the soldiers and the tax collectors. When they listened to John, they didn't say tomorrow, tomorrow. They came immediately and said, so what shall we do? And the message was, you repent. If you are a tax collector, collect the right amount. If you are a soldier, don't use violence. I pray you will not delay your own repentance also. Brethren, we need to recognize the issues of prayer in the messages we have been listening to and um, to let our hearts rise up to these matters now. The very first matter we are praying about is the message we have heard and I still want us to continue and say, Lord, Help me to see what you have made me, your battle axe. I just want us to pray that prayer, your battle axe that cannot afford to be blunt. We read this morning, Ecclesiastes 10.10, 10, that when the axe is blunt, when the instrument is blunt, then more energy is required. I want you to pray and say, Lord, Help me to recognize that you have made me your battle axe and I cannot afford to be blunt. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to see and help me, Lord, to arise. And so, Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent us, that you have been sending us, that you will yet send us as we continue in the place of prayer. Lord God Almighty, let this word not be in vain in our lives in the name of Jesus. For Lord, you have said that it is your word that you send to heal your people, to deliver your people, to reposition your people. Help us therefore to respond to your word. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.